Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Bibbity Bobbity Books. My name is Ellie and today I am so excited to be talking to you about my most anticipated releases for 2022. So there are so many books that are coming out next year that I'm really, really excited for and I've found 13 that I want to talk to you about today. I tried to make a list of 10 but somehow I've ended up with 13. I guess I got a little bit carried away and overexcited but there are just so many books and I couldn't whittle it down so we've got 13 here that I'm going to talk to you about today. This isn't an exhaustive list. I'm sure there are other books that I've forgotten about and I'm sure my list will continue to grow as we get more and more information from the publishers about what's coming out next year. But as of today, these are the ones that have caught my eye. Um, I am going to talk you through these in publication order. I found all of their publication dates either on Amazon or on Waterstones. So as of today, which is the 20th of December 2021, um, these are the dates that are I know about but obviously it's all subject to change so definitely do a little google because it might not necessarily be accurate whenever you're watching this video. Um, yeah I'm gonna start with a book which is coming out on the 20th of January 2022 and that is called Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sue Lin Tan. So firstly this has one of the most stunning covers I've ever seen. I was immediately drawn in by the beautiful beautiful artwork on the front of the cover there. Um, but this is a debut fantasy novel and it's inspired by the Chinese moon goddess which sounds really intriguing um, and yeah I thought I would just give you a little read of the synopsis so you know what it's about. Um, I'm just looking over this way because I've got my laptop here by the way so if you see me glancing over here that is why. Um, but it says here, a young woman's quest to free her mother pits her against the most powerful immortal in the realm, setting her on a dangerous path where those she loves are not the only ones at risk. Growing up on the moon, Zing Yin is accustomed to solitude, unaware that she is being hidden from the powerful celestial empire who exiled her mother for stealing his elixir of immortality. But when her magic flares and her existence is discovered, Zing Yin is forced to flee her home, leaving her mother behind. Alone, powerless and afraid, she makes her way to the Celestial Kingdom, a land of wonder and secrets. Disguising her identity, she seizes an opportunity to train in the Crown Prince's service, learning to master archery and magic despite the passion which flames between her and the Emperor's son. How good does that sound? I love the fact that she was um, living on the moon and that she was being hidden away from the Emperor and the fact that she's having to hide her identity and also it sounds like there's going to be a little bit of a romance which I'm always here for so yes I am very excited about that one. I think it's going to be excellent and it's coming out in January which is so soon. Okay, the second book that I want to talk to you about today comes out on the 15th of February 2022 and that is the seventh book in the Wayward Children's series. So this book is called Where the Drowned Girls Go and it's written by Shannon Maguire. So I'm sure you've heard of the Wayward Children series before because it's a very popular kind of fantasy series made up of short stories or novellas and the premise of the Wayward Children series is that there is this school which has been set up by this woman called Eleanor West and it is kind of a sanctuary for wayward children so it's for children who have gone to other worlds and then come back to reality and are now struggling to fit in. So for example, if Alice from Alice in Wonderland went through the rabbit hole and had her amazing adventure in Wonderland and then came back home to reality um, and then struggled to fit in if no one really believed what happened to her, she would be an ideal candidate for Eleanor West School for Wayward Children. So it's such an interesting kind of setup for a series. And I read the first book actually earlier this year and loved it. I was really surprised by how kind of dark it was and how fantastical and just creative the story was. Um, so yeah, I'll be really interested to kind of catch up with the series, especially because I think this seventh book sounds really, really interesting because it's not actually about Ellen West School for Wayward Children. It's about a separate place called Whitethorn Institute. So it is a different school, I believe. Um, it says on here, there is another school for children who fall through doors and fall back out again. It isn't as friendly as Eleanor West's home for wayward children. 
So I am intrigued. So there's this other place that children can go and I think it's gonna be even darker and I cannot wait. I think this is gonna be really, really excellent. Okay, so there is another book that is coming out on the 15th of February, which I am very excited for, and that is House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Mass. So this is the second book in her Crescent City series, the first book being House of Earth and Blood. So I really enjoyed the first book when I read it and I'm really, really looking forward to getting to the sequel next year. So for those of you who don't know, this is a adult urban fantasy series and the first book follows our main character Bryce um, who kind of gets muddled up in this murder mystery type situation. So Bryce is a half human half fae and she basically finds herself in the middle of this investigation of a murder that happened and she is helped by this bodyguard called Hunt who is a fallen angel because she is in a very dangerous situation doing this investigation and a lot happens it's quite hard to kind of summarize the story really obviously it all centers around this murder and uncovering secrets about what happened but we also uncover a lot about the world there is a lot of world building and it gets very epic and things especially towards the end of the first book so i'm very excited to see how the series is going to continue of course as we've come to expect with sarah j mass there is quite a bit of romance in here and there is some smut which is uh very enjoyable so yeah i'm really really also looking forward to reading a little bit more about the romance but yeah i cannot wait for this one i think it is going to be brilliant and this is all set in a world as well where there are lots of different fantastical creatures so we've got werewolves and we've got angels and we've got fae and things like that so it's a really creative world and um yeah it's just a lot of fun so i cannot wait to get to this second book which is coming out in february the next book that i want to talk to you about is a ya contemporary fantasy and it is called only a monster written by vanessa len so this is coming out on the 17th of february and i just think this sounds quite interesting so this is as i said before a contemporary fantasy but it takes a bit of a spin on the classic tale of hero versus villain which i think sounds really really interesting so i will just give you a quick read of the synopsis so it says, it should have been the perfect summer. Sent to stay with her late mother's eccentric family in London, 16 year old Joan is determined to enjoy herself. She loves her nerdy job at the historic Holland house. And when her super cute coworker Nick asks her on a date, it feels like everything is falling into place. But she soon learns the truth. Her family aren't just eccentric, they're monsters with terrifying hidden powers. And Nick isn't just a cute boy, he's a legendary monster slayer who will do anything to bring them down. So I just think that sounds so, so interesting. I love the spin on things and the fact that we're actually following the monster as the protagonist rather than the hero. I think that's quite interesting and I'll be really excited to see how that plays out. And I'm sure it's gonna be full of lots of angst and drama and romance and things because obviously she's got a crush on this Nick character even though he's a monster hunter. I don't know, I just think this sounds really, really fun and I cannot wait to get to this one. The next book on my list is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. So this is a YA fantasy book coming out on the 22nd of February and it's based on Korean legend, which I was very, very excited to hear about because I don't actually know much about Korean legend. So I was very, very intrigued by this one and also really drawn in by the beautiful cover again. I think the artwork is just stunning on this one um but yeah this sounds amazing so i'll give you a little read of the synopsis so it says deadly storms have ravaged mina's homeland for generations floods sweep away entire villages while bloody wars are waged over the few remaining resources her people believe the sea god once their protector now curses them with death and despair in an attempt to appease him, each year a beautiful maiden is thrown into the sea to serve as the sea god's bride in the hopes that one day the true bride will be chosen and end the suffering. Many believe Shim Chiong, Mina's brother's beloved, to be the legendary true bride. 
But on the night Cheong is sacrificed, Mina's brother follows her, even knowing that to interfere is a death sentence. To save her brother, Mina throws herself into the water in Cheong's stead. So I love that we've got a brother and sister dynamic in this book and that our main character Mina is throwing herself in the sea in Cheong's stead to save her brother. And it says here that she gets swept away to the spirit realm, a magical city of lesser gods and mythical beasts. So I just think this is going to be so good. I cannot wait for this one. I haven't read that many fantasy books that are set underwater. So I think that will be really, really interesting and really atmospheric. And yeah, I'm just super excited for this one. I'm excited about all of these books so you can hear me say excited a lot but uh, yeah I think that one sounds particularly good right the next book that I wanted to speak to you about is actually a horror book that's coming out on the 28th of February and it is called Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes now this is pitched as Titanic meets The Shining need i say more i am drawn in purely by that alone that sounds so interesting to me so it says on here that this is a science fiction horror novel in which a woman and her crew board a decades lost luxury cruiser and find the wreckage of a nightmare that hasn't yet ended how good does that sound i don't actually want to read any more than that because i don't want to spoil it for myself but the whole idea of there being kind of like a ghost ship i'm guessing sounds so creepy and so great i cannot wait for this one i think that is going to be so much fun and then on the 1st of March, we've got a, a book coming out by V.E. Schwab, who is obviously a very, very popular well-known author. He wrote The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, as well as Darker Shade of Magic. So I'm sure you've all heard of her before, but she is coming out with a new book called Gallant. I'm assuming it's YA because I believe the protagonist is a 16 year old girl. Um, so yeah, I don't actually know a huge amount about this one. I just added it straight onto this list um, because I do love Victoria Schwab's other books. But yeah, let's give the synopsis a read. So it says on here, 16 year old Olivia Pryor is missing three things, a mother, a father and a voice. Her mother vanished all at once and her father by degrees and her voice was a thing that she never had to start with. She grew up at Maryland School for Girls. Now, nearing the end of her time there, Olivia receives a letter from an uncle she's never met, her father's older brother, summoning her to his estate, a place called Gallant. But when she arrives, she discovers that the letter she received was several years old. Her uncle is dead. The estate is empty, save for the servants. Olivia is permitted to remain but must follow two rules. Don't go out after dusk and always stay on the right side of the wall that runs along the estate's western edge. Beyond it is another realm, ancient and magical, which calls to Olivia through her blood. How good does that sound? I am intrigued. So, so yeah, she obviously receives this letter from this uncle and then when she goes to this house she finds that her uncle is in fact dead i mean i'm intrigued and it's described on here that this book is like the secret garden meets stardust hmm an interesting couple of books to put together so i mean i'm intrigued v.e schwab writes fantastic books so i have no doubt that this is also going to be an excellent excellent novel so i'm excited for that one Okay, so the next book on my list is a little bit different and it's coming out on the 22nd of March 2022 and it's called The Bone Orchard by Sarah A. Muller. Um, so this sounds really, really intriguing. So it says on here that this is a fascinating whodunit set in a lush gothic world of secrets and magic where a dying emperor charges his favourite concubine with solving his own murder and preventing the culprit, which undoubtedly is one of his three terrible sons, from taking control of an empire. Love it already. <laughs> It then says Charm, who I'm assuming is the main character, um, is a witch and she is alone. The last of a line of conquered necromantic workers now confined within the yard of regrown bone trees at Orchard House and the secrets of their marrow. 
Ooh, so we've got a witch character in here. I don't know, this just sounds so interesting to me. I love the fact that um, it's gothic and it's a whodunit and we've got this emperor and we're following the main character who I'm assuming is his concubine. And I don't know, it just sounds a little bit dark and intriguing to me. Again, the cover is really, really drawing me in. And I don't know, I can't wait. I think this one's gonna be a little bit different. And I mean, I love whodunits and I also love of really gothic settings so put them together and what have you got an amazing book um i hope so anyway so yeah i'm excited for that one to come out on the 22nd of march Okay, then the next book on my list is actually a middle grade. So I do love middle grade. It's one of my favorite genres to read from. And I'm very excited because on the 14th of April, we have the sequel to Armari and the Knight Brothers, which is Armari and the Great Game. So I am so excited to read the second book in this series. This is such a lovely, magical middle grade series. I read the first book, was it? this year it must have been and I really really enjoyed it it is pitched as Nevermore meets Men in Black which I think is quite accurate so in the first book we follow our main character Amari who is a young girl and her brother has actually gone missing and the police have had no luck trying to find him and then one day Amari actually receives an invitation from her brother to join this secret bureau for supernatural affairs so basically she finds out that her brother has been working for this secret bureau for many years under cover and she goes along she kind of follows in his footsteps and finds out more about this whole secret bureau that he was involved in and finds out a little bit more about kind of what happened to him really and why he's ended up going missing and it's just so imaginative and fun the bureau that Amari joins is actually full of lots of different fantastical creatures and aliens that all exist but are all kind of in hiding from humans which is really really interesting and fun and yeah I don't know it's just a lovely story I really like the main character Amari I think she's great I love the fact that we've got that focus on siblings again so the fact that Amari is trying to find her brother and explores their kind of relationship and dynamic and she obviously makes friends when she goes to the bureau and there are trials in the first story as well and it's just such a fun time so I cannot wait to get to the second book next year then coming out on the 26th of April 2022 we have a book called Nettle and Bone written by T Kingfisher who's obviously a well-known author and I thought this one sounded really interesting and also a little bit weird which I love so I'm just going to give you a read of the synopsis so you know what I mean after years of seeing her sisters suffer at the hands of an abusive prince, Mara, the shy convent-raised third-born daughter, has finally realised that no one is coming to their rescue. No one except for Mara herself. Seeking the help from a powerful grave witch, Mara is offered the tools to kill a prince if she can complete three impossible tasks. But as is the way in tales of princes, witches and daughters, the impossible is only the beginning. On her quest, Mara is joined by the Grave Witch, a reluctant fairy godmother, a strapping former knight, and a chicken possessed by a demon. Yes, you heard me right, a chicken possessed by a demon. And together, the five of them intend to be the hand that closes around the throat of the prince and frees Mara's family and their kingdom from its tyrannous ruler at last. I mean, if that doesn't draw you in, I don't know what will. I am super, super intrigued by that. I think it sounds really fun and really different. And yeah, I don't know. I'm intrigued. <laughs> I think that's going to be a good one. Okay, so the next book that's on my list is something that I think a lot of people will be really excited for. And that is Book of Night by Holly Black. So obviously Holly Black is a well-known fantasy author. She's written a lot of YA and children's books, um, probably most famous for her trilogy, starting with The Cruel Prince, which is an incredibly popular YA fantasy romance series that I know a lot of people really, really love. So when I saw that she 
was bringing out an adult fantasy book, I was really, really intrigued to see how she would tackle the genre. So I immediately put it on this list and I'm really excited to see how it turns out. I don't know a huge amount about this one, to be honest, and I don't want to know a huge amount because sometimes it's nice to just go in and just see how things go. Um, but all I know is that it says on here, um, it is a modern dark fantasy of shadowy thieves and secret societies. And it says that it is in the vein of the ninth house and the ninth circus. So yeah, I'm intrigued. I think we're following a kind of pickpocket thief type character. And um, I think it's a little bit dark. I think it's a bit twisty and turny and I'm intrigued. So yeah, I'm really excited for that one. And the next book on my list is actually a thriller, which is coming out on the 21st of July. And again, I think a lot of people will be really excited for this one because this is the sequel to The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. So she is coming out with the next installment, which is called The Family Remains. And I, along with a lot of other people, I'm excited to see how this story goes. So the first book was a, a thriller. I read it earlier this year and I very much enjoyed it. It's quite a slow paced thriller, I would say, and it reads a little bit more like a family drama than an action based thriller, but it's still really good. It's got lots of twists and turns. And I remember what I enjoyed most about the first book was the characters because they were really, really fascinating. It's multiple POV and um, and yeah, it's, it's really good. And I remember when I read the first book that not everything was tied up in the end and it did leave a bit of a uh oh <laughs> sort of moment at the end and I remember thinking oh I didn't realize that she was going to do a sequel to this so yeah I'm excited to hear that she is doing a sequel and that it's coming out next year so for those of you who don't know the family upstairs um follows a young woman who basically inherits this multi-million pound house in chelsea london from her biological parents who she actually previously didn't know anything about so she is actually adopted and it's only when she turns i think it's 21 um, that's the only time that she kind of hears from her parents and when she receives this letter to tell her that she has inherited this massive house and basically she ends up kind of uncovering more about this house and it's kind of interesting history and also uncovering a bit more about her parents and how they died and she essentially finds out that she was found as a baby in this house with her parents dead downstairs in what appeared to be a suicide pact. So yeah, there's obviously a little bit of a dark history surrounding this house. And yeah, I don't wanna to say too much more because obviously I don't wanna get into spoiler territory, but it is really, really good. It kind of explores different family dynamics and different family relationships. Obviously there's lots of trigger warnings because this is a thriller. So definitely check those out before going into this, this book. But yes, I'm very excited to see where the story goes. And I think it's gonna be really, really good. And last but no means by least on my list of anticipated releases for next year is Silverborn, written by Jessica Townsend. So this is the fourth book in the Nevermore series, which is a wonderful middle grade series, probably my favourite ever middle grade series. I honestly really, really love this series so much and I cannot wait for the next book to come out next year. We haven't had an exact publication date that's been released, but I believe it's expected to come out around October next year, which is just perfect because I think this series is just so atmospheric and perfect for the kind of autumn winter months. So I cannot wait to get my hands on this one. So if you've never heard of this series before, we basically follow the main character who is a young girl called Morrigan Crow and she is believed by everybody in her community to be cursed because she was born on this really unlucky day called Eventide and because of this everybody in her family and her community believe that she is fated to die alongside all the other cursed children on her 11th birthday. However, she is actually saved by this eccentric character called Jupiter North who whisks her away on her birthday and saves her from her fate and takes her to this magical world called Nevermore. And Morrigan Crow is entered into a series of trials to try and win a place in this elite organisation called the Wanderer's Society. And 
yeah this is just such a fun kind of coming of age story i love following Mor morrigan crow as she kind of grows up and I don't want to say too much because I don't want to give any spoilers but we find out that she is quite gifted and we find out that she's got some pretty unique talents and it is such an imaginative and fun world to be in. There are lots of eccentric characters that we fall in love with. She ends up staying in this magical hotel in Nevermore which is so imaginative and seems so cosy and I just really really want to visit there um, and it's just so much fun. This is the kind of middle grade series that I think anyone can read read um, including adults I mean adults can read middle grade anyway but honestly I think even if you don't enjoy middle grade you will really enjoy this one I think there's something for everybody in these stories and they are just fantastic so I cannot wait to get my hands on that one next year okay so that brings me to the end of this video i cannot wait to get my hands on all of these beautiful books next year if you have any books that you are interested in picking up next year please do let me know in the comments because i'm always keeping my eye out for those recommendations and it would also be nice to kind of share with everybody else if you've got any um, ideas or anything that you're excited for so please let me know um but yeah i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope that you found it useful and i hope that you have a wonderful christmas Christmas if you celebrate it or just a wonderful festive season a wonderful December if you don't celebrate Christmas but yes I wish you all the best and I guess I will see you next time in the new year with another video bye